oh, she's wearing a dress, so she's a woman. <laughs> Hi guys! Welcome back to the Mystic Rebels podcast. I'm Ashley. I'm the divine feminine side of Mystic Rebels. I'm a mom and I normally wear sweatpants and t-shirts, but uh, there's something about wearing a dress that I'm like, okay, I could go to the club right now, but that was never, never my thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that girl. Never was. I was a bartender at those clubs to make good money, but I was always passing out water. Anyway, I am here today to talk to you about what herbalism is, and it is such an important question that is really hard to find answers to, and I didn't realize that it was a relevant question back in the day, back in the old covered wagon days when I first started studying herbalism, and I just thought, okay, plants are medicine, and it's just like regular medicine. It's just like Western medicine, you know, it's like a pill, except, oh, it's ground up and that's a pill or a tincture. And I did not realize what medicine was. And that's, that's a big key to this journey as well. But I started the clinical side. I was very much looking to heal my mother's cancer and my own hormonal issues and all these other things, which I did. I managed to reverse my mother's cancer multiple times, reverse my own, uh, I mean, a doctor would have called it PCOS, but it was really just horm major hormonal imbalance brought on by stress and insecurity and so many sexy wounds. Thanks, Chiron. <laughs> but what is herbalism? First, we have to understand what it's not. It is not a substitute for Western medicine because Western medicine is a bandage solution that is, is great in case of emergency. It is the place that you want to go if your arm is broken. Yeah, I mean, after you get bandaged up, you can then go see an herbalist and she or he can tell you all about the herbs that will build up calcium and help heal the wound and cleanse the wound and all these other things. That's the medicine. But allopathy is meant to be a temporary solution to something that needs to be fixed. Not to, not to say fixed as in something's wrong or something's broken, something that needs to be addressed. We're, we're addressing imbalances and creating homeostasis, balance back in the body. And it starts in the mind, but we'll get into that later too. If you ask Google what herbalism is, she will say this. I don't know why Google's a she, but we'll just call her that. The study or practice of the medicinal and therapeutic use of plants, now especially as a form of alternative medicine. Here's what herbalism is not. It is not alternative medicine. What is alternative is actually westernized pharmaceutical big drug drug companies telling you you can't do this without this and just in case you get this you should get this too. Yeah, add it to your cart. Yeah, no problems. And essentially what you're doing is allopathy just turns off the alarm as far as the body is concerned, but the fire is still a brewin. So you have to learn to stop, pause, and realize that any imbalance that you're experiencing, be it sleep, stress, anxiety, hormones, liver, addiction, all this sexual dysfunction, all these different things, they are a sign from your body that something is out of balance and we need to establish what is at the root of that. And it is never a lack of a plant or a lack of a pharmaceutical. That's never the answer. Herbalism teaches us that, clinical herbalism specifically, teaches us that these chemical constituents, these flavonoids, these um, alkaloids, all these properties of this plant can help you in this situation. This is where it's applied. And that's limiting. Clinical herbalism, a type of herbalism, the first type that I ever studied, is limiting in the sense that it still views you as alternative Western medicine views you as just a body. And why is that? First, we need to understand in the 1500s that the spirit, the idea that you were a spiritual connection to God, thriving energetic being, that was taken from us, thanks patriarchy, in the 1500s by the church. The medical community went to the church, who was at the time the supreme order, and hello Hierophant, and they asked to study the bodies 
of the dead. They said, can we keep the bodies and study life and death? And the church said, okay, so you can keep the bodies, but we keep the spirit. That's ours. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know why that voice is there. I don't, I can't do a masculine. Hey, we keep the bodies and, and uh, you keep the bodies and we got the spirit, eh? Sure. <laughs> And that's where it happened. That's because the church was in charge of your sovereignty over your spirit, of getting into heaven, of this idea that's baked into a lot of religions that you have to pass through the gates in order to be worthy. And in order to get to the line, you have to follow X, Y, Z, all these rules, and we're in charge. And that has created a dissension in our spirit, in our connection, and our power to heal ourselves naturally and to maintain balance naturally when we are in cohesion or in, in tandem work with nature. So herbalism, clinical herbalism, it is a wonderful way to understand through the lens of science, which is something that I apply to my practice. But it wasn't until I learned about Native American herbalism. Ah, I'm Native American and I've always been connected to my roots and my culture. And what I love about Native American herbalism is you can understand the real study that I personally love in learning anything pretty much is deconstruction. I love the deconstruction method of learning. And the way they did that is now called the doctrine of signatures. The doctrine of signatures is the way a plant looks, speaks to the organ system or the uh, application of the plant, wherever it would work and how it works. Native Americans took that into account. So if it, if it, the leaf looks like an earlobe, it most likely works with your ear. If there's little hairs on the, the leaf and it's kind of fuzzy, it most likely will work to release friction within certain systems. And what the Native Americans, my people, did is they also looked at the animals. So when you get into Native American herbalism, you'll see that there's bear medicine, eagle medicine, deer medicine, and that speaks to the spirit of the animal, but also the way the animal worked with the plant itself. So they would observe, some of the most powerful science is an observation. They would observe the animals when they were sick or when they were wounded and see where they would gravitate towards and what medicines they would stay away from. Okay, so that's toxic, or maybe it's just not meant to be consumed that way. Okay, that's a deer medicine because the deer uses it for this and this and this. And that's a really exciting and interesting pathway to understand plant medicine. We also have Ayurveda. Ayurveda is the Indian practice of plants. And, and what's so interesting about Ayurveda is they also have a system of doshas. Uh, they understand more so in, in tandem with traditional Chinese medicine practices that have been around for thousands of years, goes back to that we are energetic beings. And although I don't personally integrate the doshas necessarily to the degree uh, in Ayurveda that they do, I use more astrological, more um, spiritual energy to understand emotional roots and traumas. And that's really when we get into some transformational work. And I'm going to teach you that as well. But when it comes to Ayurveda, it is it, the plants. The it's just it's just a magical, magical practice. And whenever you're learning herbalism, I truly believe that you need to also study Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, Native American herbalism. I mean, just keep going African herbalism because when we deal with the tribal understanding of plants, then we get to connect to the shamanic side, which is the next type of herbalism I want to tell you about. Which is when we're working with the spirit of the plants. What? Did she just say plants have spirits? Oh my God. Yes, she did because they do. And I completely understand how woo-woo that sounds. I completely understand. And I remember the first time my husband experienced some of the most powerful plant medicine and he was like, what, what did you just give me? What was that? Uh... <laughs> And those of you that know my husband, he is a very logical, analytical, pragmatic, is it applicable, does it work kind of person. And I love that about him. He has revolutionized astrology. Mystic Rebels. 
alchemistic astrology is the real astrology. If you're interested in learning that, come on in. But <laughs> that's my husband's side of the coin. And I gave him something that is a medicine that has no actual plant material in it. It is called a flower essence. And if you're interested, comment down below and we can get into that deeper too. And that's, ener that's the epitome of energetic medicine. And as energetic beings, we respond to that. We respond to the essence of the plant, to the connection to the plant. And the first time I heard that uh, plants were emotional remedies was from Lise Wolf, uh, an amazing master herbalist who I've studied from for a few years now. And I was just like, what? Did she just say that? And this is the queen who is just so analytical and logical. And out of nowhere, she said that. And I was like, okay, I need to listen. This is what's missing. This is what's been missing. Because I had my clinical practice and I would help people feel better, their lifestyle. We would make shifts. We would um, They would adopt plants. They would use certain plants. And it was a, a three-month protocol. And it was just take these medicines change your diet, let's add in this, let's do this, and we'll see how we feel. Well, within a month, they felt better. And within three months, they felt better. The problem was that the medicine, the, the, the plants were not working as the actual medicine because we weren't connecting to the emotional root of the disease, of the imbalance. So in order to create homeostasis, we need to understand that the plant is an ally. Herbalism is not about how to heal yourself with a plant. I'm gonna say that again. Herbalism is not about how to heal yourself with a plant. Herbalism is absolutely amazing for situational things and, and disease and imbalances and can absolutely assist in your healing but everything has an emotional root. And when we get to the energetic side, to the spiritual side of plant medicine, the shamanic side, oh, we get to some really transformational power. So when I teach herbalism, I am teaching not just about the plants, but when I started learning herbalism, I realized, oh shit, I'm learning about science and anatomy and physiology and oh my god, I, <laughs> I just thought I was going to learn about plants. You can't just learn about plants because within the doctrine of signatures, if you're doing really good, practical, applicable herbalism, you need to understand the correlations between nature and us. We were made perfect, plants were made in service of us, and we were made in service of them. That's a altercation to the quote in the Bible that plants were made in service of man. I mean, there's a few things about the Bible that I would like to um, also alter, but <laughs> it's not my business. But that specifically is my area. When we think that the things around us, this, this earth is for us, we demean our ability to connect and converge with her medicine and her power because this planet is made of the same elements that we are made of. And once we start working with plants, you can even talk to plants. I know this sounds crazy, but I tell my clients, I tell my students, this month we're working with cacao. And or this month we've, we've had several community members work with cacao. And I had one client actually who has had her cacao for months, but she was afraid to try it. And she finally did. And she had an amazing experience. And then the second time she did it, she said that she was having all these reactions and anxiety and she didn't understand. And I asked her one question, did you set intentions before you took the medicine? And she said, no, but I didn't think that would be a problem. <laughs> And that's what it comes down to, you guys. All I did with her was have her set her intentions now because that medicine is a part of her. Calm her spirit, calm her mind. I, I gave her a couple guided meditation prompts and she connected to the magic of the medicine within her and asked for what she needs from that source, from that power within the plant, which was within her. And she, she was like, 
okay, I'm going to do this every day. And I was like, no, 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 (laughs) no, it's not an everyday thing. This is a ritualistic spiritual practice. We have to honor the plants. And even I have been guilty of overusing plants. And a lot of modern herbalists are guilty of this too. They'll be like, I got to get my my herbs in for the day. I need to have my infusion and I need to have this and this and this. And oh, I've got tinctures over there. I need to have that. And we end up just letting it be the substitute. And we don't want to do that. We want to break free from the matrix of the idea that we need something outside of ourselves to be healthy and in balance. That's a bunch of BS. What we need is to find balance within and allow allies, friends, support, and spirit to be a part of our daily life and to realize that we are the temple. We are the church where we sit and worship. So there is an aspect of ourselves that we need to honor and we need to have reverence for. You were made perfect. And in upcoming episodes, I'm going to tell you why. There's proof. Once you start learning anatomy and physiology in tandem with herbalism, you'll understand. It's like, oh my God, I'm not broken. Nothing's wrong with me. Environmentally speaking, in terms of epigenetic, we know in terms of epigenetics, we know that 99.9% of dis-ease and imbalances are environmentally caused. So it's our emotions, it's our reactions to our environment, it's our perspective of the environment. And in some cases, most of my clients that have had hormonal imbalances or sexual dysfunction or a relationship to sex that is... Um, thwarted, I guess you could say, or there's some sort of insecurity around sex, that stems from around a certain age. And it's usually about 12 years old for women. There's there's something that happens that sort of like allows us to see ourselves and our sexuality apart from this system. And I think it, it, it correlates also to just getting our periods and being conditioned to think, ew, it's gross. And oh, just it's for seven days or it's for four days and then it'll be over. It's no big deal. But oh my God, your period is amazing. And I could do a whole episode on that if you guys are interested. <laughs> but when it comes to herbalism, we need to honor the spirit and the body are one. We need to infuse the scientific lens and the spiritual lens to understand the full spectrum of the magic of plants. So I hope you guys will take this journey with me. I have been studying herbs only about a decade now. And I know for some people that's like, that's a long time. But some of my favorite teachers and some of the most amazing herbalists out there have been doing it for 40 plus years. And my practice is plants are are a part of the support. I also integrate tarot, my own psychic ability. I teach people how to awaken their psychic abilities because everyone is psychic because we were made perfect. (laughs) And a big part of our community that we've developed at Mystic Circle is supporting people on this journey. Many people go through the spiritual awakening alone and feel isolated. And then they find things online that tell them that you're supposed to suffer and that dive into the darkness. And it's not supposed to be about light or dark. It's supposed to be about the integration of your light side and dark side. Stars only show up bright against the darkest night. So it's necessary to understand your wounds, to understand your shadow, but it's not necessary to stay there. We want to find pathways forward to help you heal and live your best life and vibe higher. And that's what we're doing at Mystic Circle, our school that you can join where we have webinars. Our upcoming webinar is on time, T-H-Y-M-E. Yes, baby. We're working with that plant this month in our monthly herbalism class. And I'm just so excited for everything that we're creating. If you want to learn herbalism, it's there. Astrology, it's there. Tarot, it's there. Psychic development, it's there. Healing, it's there. Supportive community, it's there. (laughs) So we hope you will join us in Mystic Circle. And thank you so much for joining us once more on the Mystic Rebels podcast. My name is Ashley and (laughs) vibe higher, everyone.